let's take a look at simple harmonic motion in a little more depth. And we'll start out by looking at this quantity. It's represented by the lowercase omega, and it's called either angular speed or angular frequency. And people just can't make up their mind about which one it is. But either way, the unit of angular speed or angular frequency is radians per second. And we can interpret it a couple different ways. In circular motion, it's the rate of change of the angle. In simple harmonic motion, one way to think about it is it's the rate of change in the phase of the motion. So you can think of it as a measure of how quickly an oscillation completes a 2 pi radian phase change. So how quickly it goes through the entire phase, the entire cycle of an oscillation. And omega is proportional to the frequency, like so. And so we can write that a slightly different way. We can write it in terms of the period. Omega is inversely proportional to the period. And that equation will show up in your data booklet. Now, when we think about simple harmonic motion, we know that the displacement from equilibrium has to be sinusoidal. So the two simplest possible expressions for displacement in simple harmonic motion are this way using a sine or this way using a cosine. And in each case, x0 represents the amplitude of the displacement. All right. Now, there are more complicated options. If we added in a phase angle, we could also get these other expressions, but we're not going to worry about those right now. Let's say we either have sine of omega t or cosine of omega t. Well, if we wanted to figure out the velocity of the object in simple harmonic motion, we would take the derivative of the displacement, because velocity is the rate of change in the displacement. It's the derivative of the displacement with respect to time. So that gets us expressions for the velocity in either situation. So if we started out with x is equal to x0 sine of omega t, the velocity would be written like this. Amplitude times the angular frequency times the cosine of omega t. And then on the other side, for if we started out with a displacement that goes as cosine, the velocity would equal negative x0, the amplitude, times omega times the sine of omega t. And if we go one more step, we can get the acceleration, because acceleration is the derivative of the velocity with respect to time. So we can get, excel uh, we can get expressions for the acceleration in both cases. Either way, you can see that the acceleration is equal to negative omega squared times x. That is always true in simple harmonic motion. In fact, that is called the governing equation of simple harmonic motion. And also, it contains an idea that we've seen before. It contains the idea that acceleration is proportional to the displacement, and also that acceleration is in the opposite direction of the displacement. And if you remember back to when we first started looking at simple harmonic motion, remember, that was the condition for simple harmonic motion to occur. And here we see it again in that governing equation. Now I'm going to shift gears and we're going to derive a new equation for the velocity in simple harmonic motion. And let's assume that in this situation the displacement is equal to the amplitude times sine of omega t. And so then therefore it follows that the velocity is equal to the amplitude times the angular frequency times the cosine of omega t. Okay. I'm going to write down something that's not very controversial. I'm going to write down that sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. And that's a trig identity. Okay. Now I'm going to multiply everything by amplitude squared. Seems weird, but well, if I do that, then this first term is displacement squared. Right? Compare it to our displacement equation. All right. And then also I'm going to write the second term by omega squared. Seems strange, but if I do that, the numerator is the same as velocity squared. Compare that to the velocity equation. All right. So then I get this, and I'm going to 
move some things around. I'm going to isolate the velocity with a couple algebra steps. And I end up here. This equation is useful for finding the velocity of an object in simple harmonic motion if you know the displacement from equilibrium instead of the time. Now let's take a look at the simple pendulum. I just mean that there is a mass on the end of a string and it goes back and forth like this. It oscillates. And I'm going to draw the diagram here. Okay. Um, and there's two forces that act on the pendulum. There's the tension force from the string and then a gravitational force that acts directly downward. Now we do often refer to something called a restoring force. This refers to the force or net force that brings an object back to equilibrium. Now in the case of the simple pendulum, the restoring force, the force that acts to bring the object back towards equilibrium, is a component of the weight. And I'll draw what I mean. So here's a detail. There's the weight. The restoring force is the force that's acting back toward equilibrium. And I can draw it a different way. Let's draw a different triangle. And if I do that, well, the restoring force is equal to the weight times sine of theta. Okay, it's that, that component of the weight. Another way to write it is that the restoring force is mg sine of theta. Now, in this case, the net force is the restoring force. And if it's hard to see that, notice that the tension force balances out the other component of the weight. So the only thing that's left, if you add up all the forces, is the restoring force, that one component of the net force. So we can write it this way. The net force is equal to ma, of course, Newton's second law. But I can replace the net force with negative mg sine theta. Now, the negative is there because of the direction of the restoring force. Okay, And so I can get an expression for the acceleration. It's equal to negative g sine theta. Now, I'm going to look at this in a slightly different way. I'm going to draw a different triangle. Looking at this system using just the lengths rather than forces, we can see that the sine of theta is approximately equal to the displacement over L. Now, why approximately? Well, that's a little complicated. That's not exactly the displacement. The displacement is really a line from the pendulum to the lowest point. So really, it's more accurate to say that the tangent of theta is equal to the displacement over L. But for small values of theta, the sine of theta is approximately equal to the tangent of theta. So as long as theta is small, this will work. Now, I know I'm waving my hands a lot, and I'm talking a lot, and that's a lot of words to explain this. But the big point is, we have an expression for the acceleration, and we have an expression for sine of theta. So we can combine those, and we get an expression that the acceleration is equal to negative g over the length of the string times the displacement. Now, notice, in this expression, the acceleration is proportional to the displacement and the acceleration is in the opposite direction of the displacement. So this fulfills the requirements of simple harmonic motion. And if we compare that to the governing equation of simple harmonic motion, this equation for the pendulum shows that the angular frequency of a pendulum is equal to the square root of g over l. Or, if we use that omega is equal to 2 pi over t, we can also show that the period of a pendulum is equal to 2 pi times the square root of L over G. Keeping in mind that we did make, some, make an approximation to get to these results. The approximation was that theta has to be small. Now let's look at a slightly more straightforward situation. Let's look at a mass spring situation. So we have this, we have an object attached to a spring, the object is going to oscillate, uh, here's the displacement, here's the restoring force, here's the equilibrium position. And in this situation, of course, Newton's second law has to apply. So F net equals MA. And the restoring force here is the net force. And that's going to equal MA. And here, the restoring force, the force bringing it back towards equilibrium, is Hooke's law for a spring force. The force is equal to negative KX. So negative KX is equal to MA. If we solve for the acceleration, 
we get that the acceleration is negative k over m times x. Again, we see this is an expression where the acceleration is proportional to the displacement and the acceleration is in the opposite direction of the displacement. So we have simple harmonic motion. And if we compare that to the governing equation, we see that omega squared is equal to k over m, or the angular frequency is equal to the square root of k over m. And we can also find the period for this situation. The period is equal to 2 pi over omega. And if we put in omega, we get the period is equal to 2 pi times the square root of m over k. And notice that in this time, we didn't use any approximations. Pendulum, we had to make an approximation. But for the mass on the end of a spring, we did not make an, an approximation. Last thing we'll look at is energy in simple harmonic motion. So let's start out with the kinetic energy. Kinetic energy equation, you know, 1 half mv squared. And using our velocity equation that we derived just a moment ago, we can show that the kinetic energy is given by this expression in simple harmonic motion. And after some math, we could show that the total energy is given by this expression in simple harmonic motion. And using those two expressions, we can create a graph of energy versus displacement from equilibrium. And if we do that, well, let's see. The total energy is constant. The total energy, you look at that expression. None of those things change, so that's constant. And the kinetic energy, if we look at that, well, let's see, that would be an upside down parabola. So it would look like this. And then the potential energy would be the difference between the two. So the potential energy would look like this. And if we analyze it, well, let's see, if the object is at equilibrium, then it has the greatest amount of kinetic energy and it has the least amount of potential energy. And if it's at one of the extrema of the displacement, then it has the most potential energy and the least kinetic energy. Or another way to say that, at equilibrium, it's moving the fastest because it has the most kinetic energy. And at the extrema, it's stationary because the kinetic energy there is zero.